This video is over compound probability. Compound probability is the intersection or union of two or more probabilities. When you have compound prob probability and you're using the word and, that means you are going to multiply the probabilities. If the events are independent, that means with replacement, you're going to find each probability and then you're going to multiply them. So probability of A and B is the probability of A times the probability of B. If the events are dependent, that means you did not have replacement, then you're going to find the probability of the first, find the probability of the second, given that the first has occurred, and then you're going to multiply them. And we're going to use some examples so this will make more sense. If a coin is tossed four times, what is the probability of getting tails all four times? Well, are these independent or dependent events? Every time I toss a coin, it's completely independent from the time before. So this would be like saying tails and tails and tails and tails. These are independent events. So I'm going to find the probability of finding tails. And remember, when you're finding probability, it's always your favorable over your total. So what's the probability when I toss a coin of getting tails over my total possible outcomes? Well, there's only one tail on a coin, so that would be one. And there's only two choices, heads or tails. That's my total. So it would be one half. So the probability of finding tails four times in a row would be one half times one half times one half times one half, which is going to give me one sixteenth. Every time you find probability, I want you to do a reduced fraction, a decimal rounded to two decimal places, and a percent. So that would be uh, six one hundredths and six percent. What is the uh, a die is rolled twice? What is the probability of rolling two different numbers? Well, what they're really asking is for you the first time to roll any number, and then the second time to roll any other number. So you can see the second roll is completely dependent upon what you rolled the first time. So these are dependent events. I'm going to find the probability of rolling any number, and there's six possible outcomes on a die, and I could roll any of those six. So it's six over six. And then the second roll, I need the probability of rolling any other number. So if I've already had one number that's taken out of the mix, there's only five left, but out of a total of six. So then I am going to, what is probability of rolling two different numbers? Okay, I'm going to multiply those. Because even though it doesn't say the word and, it's implied. So I'm going to say six six times five six and I get a probability of 5 6, which is 0.83 or 83%. A box of chocolates contain 10 milk chocolates, 8 dark chocolates, and 6 white chocolates. Jessica randomly chooses a chocolate, eats it, and then randomly chooses another chocolate. What is the probability that Jessica chose a milk chocolate and then a white chocolate? Well, notice it says that she eats it. So that means there was no replacement, and we're also using the word and. So these are dependent events because she did not replace. All right, so I'm going to have to find the probability of her getting a milk, eating a, or choosing a milk chocolate and then choosing a white chocolate given that she has already chosen a milk chocolate. Okay, so first we're going to need our total. So we're going to add all of these up and find out that there are uh, 24 chocolates in this box. The There are 10 milk chocolates, so 10 24ths reduces to 5 twelfths. Then there are six white chocolates in the box, but the second time she chooses, she's already eaten one of those, so there's only 23 chocolates in the box the second time. And so I'm going to take 5 twelfths times 6 twenty thirds and get 5 46, which is 0.11 or 11% is the probability that she will choose a milk chocolate and then a white chocolate. All right. 
So here's a couple that you can uh, work on your own or you can work with me, I do not care. Uh, but if you're feeling pretty confident, why don't you pause your video and try these. Okay, Vince and Nate went to a pet store to buy dog food. On the shelves are 10 bags of dry dog food and 6 cans of wet dog food for them to choose from. What is the probability that Vincent and Nate both chose dry dog food if Vincent randomly chose first and kept the first kind that he picked? Well, these would be dependent because Vincent did not replace. He kept his bag. There's a total of uh, 16 bags. So to find dry, I would take the number of dry over my total so Vincent had 10 dry out of 16. When Nate got up there, he had 10 dry out of 15 because Vincent had already taken one of the bags. Notice that the only thing we're changing is the total. We don't change the top number. So now we're going to Oh, we're going to reduce those fractions, and then we're going to multiply them because we use the word and, and we're going to get 10 24ths, which reduces to 5 twelfths, which is 0.42 or 42%. Our rental agency has 12 sedans, eight gray, uh, has 12 white sedans, eight gray sedans, six red sedans, and three green sedans for rent. Miss Link rents a sedan returns it because the radio is broken and then gets another sedan. What is the probability that Miss Link was given a green sedan and a gray sedan? All right, well these are, let's first, let's figure out how many total sedans we have, which is 29s, and these are independent because she took the sedan back. So, the probability of a green sedan is 3 out of a total of 29. The probability of a gray sedan is 8 out of 29. And we're going to multiply those, which gives us 24 out of 841, which reduces to 3 one hundredths or 3%. ,100 now, I want you to go back up at the top of your notes and look for compound probability using the word or. So remember, compound probability is the intersection or union of two or more probabilities. And when you use the word or, that means you are going to add your probabilities. If there is no overlap between the events, then you find each probability and you add them. So probability of A or B equals the probability of A plus the probability of B. If there is some overlap, then you're going to find each probability and the overlap. You're going to add the probabilities and subtract the overlap. So the probability of A or B in this case would equal the probability of A plus the probability of B minus that overlap, which is the probability of A and B. Now can Additional probability is when there are dependent or overlapping events. So if you hear conditional probability, that's what they're talking about. They're talking about the probability with the overlap. Okay, Vanity's bowling record indicates that for any frame, the probability that she will bowl a strike is 30%. A spare, 45% and neither is 25%. Notice that they've already calculated the probabilities here. What is the probability that Vanity will bowl either a spare or a strike for any given frame that she bowls? Well, in bowling, those are independent events. When you bowl, go up to bowl, you're either going to hit a, a spare, a strike, or a number of pins. So these are mutually exclusive events. The probability that she will get a spare has already been calculated. It's 45%. Uh, the probability of a strike is 30%. I'm using the word or, so I'm going to add those two, and I'm going to get 0.75 or 75%. Now, 
I would like you to try this one. This does not say independent practice, but pause your video and try this one on your own. Pause your video now. Okay, now, I'm saying that these are mutually exclusive events. Noah owns 145 baseball cards, 102 football cards, and 48 basketball cards. What is the probability that Noah randomly selects a baseball or a football card from his collection? Well, baseball and football don't have anything to do each with each other in the card business, so these are mutually exclusive. So we have to find the probability of uh, pulling out a baseball card and the probability of pulling out a football card and then just add them together because we're using the word or. And when I do that, probability, first I totaled up all the cards and got that <clears throat> there's 295 cards. There's 145 that are baseball and 102 that are football. So I'm going to add those two fractions together and get 247 out of 295 change that to a decimal, 0.84. So there's an 84% chance that he will randomly select a baseball or a football card from his collection. All right, now let's look at this next one. It says independent practice, but we're going to do this one together. Uh, we're going to do the first one together, and then I'm going to ask you to do the second one. So, Maddie's cat had a litter of eight kittens. The litter included two orange females, three mixed color females, one orange male, and two mixed color males. Maddie wants to keep one kitten. What is the probability that she randomly chooses a kitten that is female or orange? Okay, well, the easiest way to do this is to make a little chart. Because these are going to be overlapping events. So I'm going to just make a little chart here and I'm going to have female, male, and then orange mixed. And I'm going to put my numbers in there. I have a total of eight cats. And this helps me think this through because I want to know the probability of female or orange. So I can see there's going to be some overlap here because I have some orange females. So since it has overlapping, what I'm going to do is prime the probability of female, the probability of orange, and then I'm going to subtract out that overlap because I don't want to double count orange females. So the probability of picking a female cat is 5 out of 8. Remember, it's always favorable over total. The probability of an orange cat is 3 out of 8. And then the probability of female and orange is 2 out of 8. So I'm going to say 5 eighths plus 3 eighths minus 2 eighths. And I'm going to get 6, H, which, six eighths, which reduces to 3 fourths, which is 0.75 or 75% chance that Maddie will choose a kitten that is female or orange. Now, using this same setup, I would like you to try the next problem on your own. And so pause your video, work this one using that same concept, and then let's come back and talk about it. So pause your video now. Okay, so hopefully you set up a chart that looked something like this uh, with 20 males getting a math award, 28 females getting a math award, 30 males get an English award, 48 females get an English award out of 126 students. And they want you to find the probability that a student interviewed at random is female or won an award for English out of those 126. So I know I'm going to come up with some totals. I have to have total females and total English, and it's going to be overlapping events. So I'm going to find the probability a female or they won an English award. And I'm going to do that by finding the probability of female, the probability of winning an English award, and then subtracting out the overlap in those two. That is females that won an English award. So the probability of finding a female is 76 out of 126. Probability of winning an English award is 78 out of 126. And the probability of female and an English award is 48 out of 126, 
We've got to subtract that out because we've double counted that. So I'm going to put all of those numbers together and subtract and reduce my fraction to 5 63rds. It will give me 0.84 or an 84% that a student picked to be interviewed was female or won an award for English. Okay, you should have everything you need now to start your homework.